Hi, I'm Vanessa from SpeakEnglishWithVanessa.com. Can you use these top 100 sentences to describe your daily life? Let's talk about it. A hundred sentences? Wow, Vanessa, you've really outdone yourself this time. Well, it's true. <laughs> Today, I'm going to be taking you through my daily routine. Hopefully, it's the same as yours as well, along with these categories, and you will be learning the top 100 sentences and phrases to talk about your daily life. And to help you never forget what you are about to learn, you can download the free PDF worksheet that I've created just for you. All of these 100 sentences, the definitions, the sample sentences, and at the bottom of the worksheet, you can answer Vanessa's challenge question. You can click on the link in the description to download that free PDF worksheet today. All right, are you ready to get started with the first category? What's the first thing you do in the day? Well, you wake up, let's go see. 10 sentences for waking up in the morning. Ugh, I hate it when my alarm clock goes off. I always push snooze. What about you? Oh no, I accidentally turned my alarm clock off and I overslept. Ooh, I really like to sleep in on the weekends. Notice the difference between to sleep in and to oversleep. To sleep in can be an enjoyable thing, but to oversleep is always bad. You're probably gonna be late to work. Ooh, I jumped out of bed because I overslept. It's time to wake up, rise and shine. But maybe you woke up on the wrong side of the bed and when you hear someone say, rise and shine, nothing could be worse. When I finally get out of bed in the morning, I try to make the bed. Make the bed. It makes me feel nice and fresh in the morning when I wash my face and brush my teeth. Then I pick out what I'm going to wear for the day and get dressed. 10 common sentences for breakfast. I usually try to find time to whip up some breakfast before I get started on my day. My husband turns on the coffee pot to brew some coffee. For me, I boil some water in the tea kettle for my morning tea. When I have fresh lemons, sometimes I like to make some fresh lemon juice in the morning. If I have some bread, like I don't today, I'm sorry, <laughs> I throw some toast in the toaster. When I have a little more time, I scramble some eggs for breakfast. Mmm, straight from my chickens. Then I realize that I'm gonna be late for work, so I scarf down my breakfast. Did you notice this fast verb? To scarf down your breakfast means that you eat really quickly. There were some other fast expressions in this section to throw some bread in the toaster, to whip up your breakfast. It implies that a lot of us don't leave enough time in the morning, so we have to do things quickly. I clear the table and put the dirty dishes in the sink. A lot of times I fill up my to-go mug and take it to the office. This can also be called a tumbler, especially because it's insulated and can keep my tea hot all day. The final expression for breakfast is what happens if you wake up so late and you have no time to drink anything, to eat anything, what do you say? Well, you could say this. Ugh, I overslept, so I think I will get something on the way. You could say on the way to the office, but you don't need to. You can say, oh, I'm gonna get something on the way or I'm gonna pick up something on the way and it means you're gonna stop by a little restaurant or a cafe or a coffee shop and get something to eat and drink on your way to work. 10 expressions for going to work or school. It's time for me to head to work. This verb, to head somewhere, is great when you're going in a direction. I'm headed to the store. I'm gonna head to work. What are you doing? Well, I'm heading to school right now. Before I drive, I always buckle my seatbelt. Buckle my seatbelt. Then I back out of the driveway. I back out of the driveway. 
Once I'm on the highway, I speed up to drive faster. When I'm stuck in traffic, I need to slow down or sometimes completely stop. When I need to turn, it's important to use your blinker. To use your blinker. I try to avoid traffic on my commute, so usually I leave a couple minutes early. I have to merge onto the highway. I don't really like doing that, but it's necessary. While I'm driving, I try to watch out for school buses and pedestrians. I don't want to hit anyone. <laughs> The best thing about my commute is that I get to kill two birds with one stone. I drive to work and I listen to Vanessa's videos on the way. 10 sentences for working with other people in the office. Excuse me, when you have a moment, can I ask you a question? This is an extremely polite and wonderful question to ask in the office. I'm sorry, I'm having trouble understanding the assignment. Can you explain it a little bit more? I'm filling in for our manager today because he's sick. Do you know who is going to be the lead on this project? As you can imagine, this word, the lead, is short for the leader. But in the office, you will often hear just the lead. I'm the lead on that project. Great. When you work with customers, it's great to say, Hi, how can I help you? Hi, how can I help you? Or you can say, thanks for your patience, I'll be right with you. This is a great phrase to use on the phone as well if you're talking with a client or with a customer or with anyone really and you can't talk with them right away. You might say, hi, thanks for your patience, I'll be right with you. Perfect. The last four sentences use extremely common and useful idioms for the workplace. I think I'm gonna have to bite the bullet and tell my boss about the mistake that I made on that report. Well, that plan didn't go like I expected. I guess it's back to the drawing board. You don't need to be an architect or an artist to use this expression, it's just an idiom. So if you need to completely scrap your plans and start over, you can say, oh, I guess it's back to the drawing board. When you work on a group project, it is incredibly important to pull your own weight. Hmm, can you imagine what this means? It means that you don't just sit there and wait for other people to do the work. Instead, you are contributing an equal amount. You're pulling your own weight and being an equal member of the group. The final office expression I use all the time, <laughs> you might say, all right, let's touch base next week after the project has already gotten started. To touch base is kind of a baseball expression, and it means let's check in, let's talk to each other, and kind of see where we're at. Let's touch base next week. You don't need to message me every day, but I wanna check in and see how things are going. Let's touch base. 10 expressions for taking a break. Whether you work full-time, you are a full-time mother or father, whether you are a full-time student or you're retired, everyone needs to take a break. When I was painting inside my house, I needed to step outside and get some fresh air. Ah, oh, it's so nice out here. A lot of people at my office take a smoke break, but I don't smoke, so I take a sunshine break. Are you hungry? I think it's time for a snack break. Hey, I'm going on a coffee run. Do you want anything? This is a great expression to use at the office or at school when you are going to a coffee shop and you're going to be buying coffee or tea and you want to offer to get something for someone else. I'm going on a coffee run. I'm going on a tea run. Would you like anything? <sighs> the grocery store, the bank, the post office. I need to run some errands this afternoon. I need to run some errands this afternoon. It doesn't mean that you're actually running, but maybe you're going a little bit quickly because it's not too fun. These last five expressions are for when you really need a break. What can you say? Oh, I'm falling asleep at my desk. I think I need to take a lap around the office to wake myself up. Oh, it's so hot. We've been working outside in the sun. I think we should take a breather and go sit in the shade. Whew, now that my assignment is finished, I'm gonna take a minute before I work on anything else. Congratulations to me. <laughs> Whew, this hike is harder than I thought. 
I need to catch my breath before we go up the next hill. To catch my breath. Oh, it's a great expression for when you need to take a break. And our final taking a break expression is, whew, it's the end of the day. Let's hit pause before we start any new projects. It's time to go home. 10 expressions for saying goodbye at work or at school. In the office, all right, I'm shutting down for the day. At school, time to pack up, let's go home. At work or at school, you can say, let's call it a day, time to go home. All right, that's it. I think we've done all that we can do today. I'm headed out, I'll see you tomorrow. I gotta run, I'll catch up with you tomorrow. I'm out of here, I've got an appointment I've got to get to. That's a wrap. Nice work, everyone. We finished. Bye. See you tomorrow. Bye, everyone. Have a good evening. 10 expressions for going out to a restaurant with your family or friends. <sighs> I don't feel like cooking tonight. Let's eat out. This is the most common phrasal verb for talking about going to a restaurant. Let's eat out. I love eating out and it means going to a restaurant. Maybe you don't want to sit inside. You could say, oh, it's such a beautiful day outside. Can we get a table on the patio? Can we get a table on the patio? Hmm, I usually order the grilled chicken, but do you have any specials today? Hmm, I haven't eaten here before. What do you recommend? All right, I think I'd like the Caesar salad, please. Hmm, I'm not very hungry. Do you want to split a pizza with me? Can I get a refill on my drink when you have a chance? Thanks. How's your food? It looks delicious. I think I'll order that next time. Can you bring me a to-go box? I think I'd like to save this for later. Thanks. In the US, it's really common to get a to-go box because yes, just like the stereotype, our food portions are huge and it's no problem to take home your leftovers in a to-go box. Sometimes we call this a doggy bag. It doesn't look like a dog. It's not really for your dog, but you could call it either a to-go box or a doggy bag. I know we just had a big dinner, but let's splurge and get dessert too. What do you think? 10 common expressions about playing with your kids. It seems like little and big boys always want to roughhouse and play hard. It seems like my kids always want to eat a snack. What about yours? Wow, look at that tall Lego tower you made. It's a beautiful day to go on a bike ride down the street. Sometimes doing a puzzle is a great way to calm down and relax. It's so satisfying to hit a baseball, even if you're just playing by yourself. Nothing is more fun than going down a slide into a huge pile of leaves. My kids love to do chalk in a shady part of the walkway. I do too. The first thing my son does in the morning is pick raspberries in our backyard. Sometimes my son gets so tired that he takes a nap in the middle of the floor. Aw, how cute. 10 sentences for relaxing at the end of the day. Ah, oh, what a day. I'm so glad to finally be home. But before I can relax, I really need to finish up some chores. I just spent a few minutes tidying up the house, so now I can relax on the couch. After a long day, some people just like to zone out and watch TV. Or you can use the fun expression, at the end of a long day, I like to veg out and watch TV. This comes from the word vegetable because, let's be honest, when you watch TV, your brain is kinda like a vegetable. It's not doing very much, but it's kinda nice sometimes to just veg out and watch TV. Before I go to bed, I like to catch up on the book that I'm reading. Hmm, so interesting. At the end of a long day, I like to just chill. Maybe that's watching some TV. Maybe that's reading my book. Oh, I don't wanna do much. I just want to chill. What can you say to someone else who's had a really long day? 
Well, if they've come over to your house as a guest, when you open the door and greet them, you could say, make yourself at home. This means that they will feel comfortable in your house. Make yourself at home, open the cupboard, get yourself a glass of water if you want, feel free to sit down, don't worry about any kind of formal rules, make yourself at home. Or you might say to your loved one, oh, I can see you've had a really long day. Why don't you put your feet up and I'll get you a glass of water. Put your feet up, maybe sit on the couch, put your feet up and I'll get you a glass of water. Don't worry, I got it. If you've had a busy month, a busy year, <laughs> you might say, I'm so thankful for our vacation coming up. I really need some R&R. &R. This is not railroad. <laughs> this means rest, relaxation. Some people say it means to recuperate. This means that you are chilling out and you're gaining your strength back. We often see this in writing. I'm going to get some R&R &R this weekend in the mountains, I'll be back later. But you can also use this in conversation. 10 expressions for your nighttime routine. It's finally the end of the day. Well, before I go to bed, I always double check that I have locked my door. After that, I go through the house and turn off the lights. I already read bedtime stories to my two sons. They're asleep. So I need to tiptoe quietly to my bedroom so they don't wake up. Let's go. Before I go to bed, I need to take a shower to get clean for bed. Then I need to brush my teeth. Usually when you brush your teeth, you brush your teeth and then you spit <laughs> and rinse your mouth. Finally, it's time to get cozy for the day, put on my pajamas, and put my clothes in the laundry basket. Before I go to bed every night, I double check my alarm. I wanna make sure that I don't oversleep. Finally, it's time to hit the hay. I can curl up under the covers and drift off to sleep. Good night. Congratulations on learning these 100 most common sentences about daily life. Now I have a question for you. Let me know in the comments, what time do you usually go to bed? For me, I try to go to bed between 10 and 11 o'clock, but honestly, it's usually closer to midnight. <laughs> Let me know in the comments what it is for you, and don't forget to download the free PDF worksheet with all 100 of these common sentences and some definitions to help you out so that you can use them in your daily life and you never forget them. You can click on the link in the description to download that free PDF worksheet today. Well, thanks so much. I'll see you again next Friday for a new lesson here on my YouTube channel. Bye. The next step is to download the free PDF worksheet for this lesson. With this free PDF, you will master today's lesson and never forget what you have learned. You can be a confident English speaker. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel for a free English lesson every Friday. Bye.